Hi. So um, there are some issues in a notice to vacate that are not common but can come up, uh, particularly if um, the, the paperwork and the underlying agreement, or if there is no agreement, um, you know what what you can do about recovering attorney's fees. So the the best case scenario is you've got a lease that awards reasonable and necessary attorney fees um, to the plaintiff for filing a lawsuit. That generally happens with a well-constructed uh, residential lease or commercial lease. Um, but if you've got either a tenancy that you inherited, uh, this happens sometimes when you purchase property and there are already tenants there and you get handed a tenant, but there's no lease. That, that, that happens. Or you, you purchase a foreclosed property and there are people living there with whom you have no written agreement, right? Maybe they're the owners, maybe they're tenants of the owners. Uh, maybe they're just, just squatters who, who came in because they knew that the house was subject to foreclosure. So you've got to deal with these people. Well, you, you may tell yourself, I, well, I want to hire an attorney, but I want to be able to collect my attorney's fees from this process. But if I don't have a written contract, how can I do that? Well, uh, the property code does allow for such a thing. And so if you send a proper notice to vacate, uh, generally speaking, the property code requires uh, at least three days of notice in your notice to vacate. Well, whenever there's no written agreement, generally you go by the default provisions in the, the property code. And, and one of them is if you want to accept, if you want to uh, create a request for attorney fees, you have to give the tenant, uh, even a tenant at sufferance, right? Someone who is there after a foreclosure uh, and not because of a contract with anybody. Uh, if you're seeking to collect attorney's fees, you can send a notice to vacate with at least 10 days notice. Now your notice should say that if they fail to vacate, not only will you sue them for eviction, but you'll seek to recover reasonable and necessary attorney's fees. This language is essential, uh, both the number of days uh, and the threat of an eviction with uh, attorney fees attached. If you're able to do that, once you sue, you can make a rightful claim for attorney's fees. Um, now, not every judge is perfectly comfortable with this, um, and so it might vary from justice court to justice court. As if you send a 10-day notice, and that notice specifically says, failure to move out will result in me filing an eviction, and I will make a request for all my reasonable and necessary attorney fees. That should be sufficient, uh, even if your lease doesn't mention attorney fees, or if there is no lease, uh, but you're rightfully demanding possession. All right, hope this helps. So send me your questions. If you've got questions about uh, landlord-tenant law and there's something you're a little shaky on or something you just need a little clarification, uh, post something in our Facebook group. Shoot me an email at uh, ernie.garcia at attorneyeg.com. Uh, it's right there. Uh, or post something in our Facebook group. Uh, if you're not a member yet, join our Facebook group. We look forward to you. Uh, uh, if you look on Facebook, um, we are Texas Landlords. Uh, finally, if uh, you want to call, that's our number. Feel free to call us and we'll be happy to help in any way that we can. And so keep your questions coming. I'm happy to answer as many questions as I can.